My dear students, I am C.A. A. Rafiq. I am delighted to welcome you to this e-lecture presentation on Information Systems Audit and Control. This is a part of a series of presentations where we will demonstrate to you how the subject of Information Systems Audit and Control simple and easy to understand. In this introductory presentation, I will cover the concepts in practice and show to you how this subject is relevant practical and easily understandable. Let me give you an overview of what is this ISCA all about. ISCA, as you know, stands for Information Systems Control and Audit. Information systems are all pervasive. If you understand information systems primarily from the point of controls and as an auditor, how do you review and evaluate these controls which are embedded in information systems, you find this is a subject which is fascinating. It's simple to understand, but you need to have conceptual clarity. When you read, it's important that you read for understanding and not read for just remembering. And mugging the topics doesn't really help because what is required for you to score marks in the exam is to demonstrate that you understand the subject. And this subject is quite simple. And we will show you in this presentation how easy and simple it is to understand the subject because this subject is really relevant in the current scenario because now we know that the whole world is an online digital village and they say geography is history. If you look around, you find the neighborhood stores which are there are vanishing and this instead we have online bookstores. We are talking about data which is becoming digital. Physical is becoming digital. Books which are physical are now becoming digital. And this is an increasing trend. Music which is digital is being increasingly used. So most of the commerce which is happening in the physical world is now becoming digital. You also have online commerce which is happening and this is the order of the day. With increasing push for digitization, not only on account of technology, but also because of regulatory requirements, it will become imperative for chartered accountants to understand this impact of digitization. You will also see recently the impact of de demonetization on the digital payments, and this will also bring in new and increasing risks. And all this requires the role of the auditor. And Primarily, as auditors are control experts, the need to review and evaluate controls is paramount. And auditors are supposed to continue to provide assurance to the management. Let's understand this subject from two perspectives in this presentation. One, from a real-life perspective. I've already given you examples how technology has become all-pervasive. And this is not something which you need to remember because this is what you actually do. In any organization or enterprise you go for the purpose of audit, you find the data is available digitally. So you should know how to access and analyze the digital data. And we will be covering this from a real life perspective. I'll also give you the linkage and flow of the topics in ISCA as to how these are covered. We'll also understand this topic from the examination perspective as to how you need to understand and answer relevant questions. Let's look at the objective of the ISCA paper. The objective is that the student should be able to develop not just the competencies and skill sets, the need to demonstrate and apply this in real life situations. So the primary focus is on evaluating controls. You should know how to assess and analyze the evidence which is available in a digital format. And this digital data is available in an IT environment. You look at any enterprise, what will be the size, whether small, medium, or large, you find most of the data is available in a digital form. As auditors, when you're auditing this data, it's important that you know how to use the relevant tools and techniques to be able to access, analyze, and audit this digital data. So primarily, if you know and understand the subject of ISCA, you'll find you'll become much more effective and efficient 
in the performance of your duty, whether they are related to accounting, assurance, or compliance. So you find that ISCA is definitely a fascinating subject. And this is something where chartered accountant can take the lead. They can be in the leading edge of technology so that the clients are not at the bleeding edge of technology. I hope you'll find this presentation interesting. Let's understand what are the key focus of the ISCA paper. As I said, it is to understand the relevant practical knowledge and skills for the purpose of evaluation of the controls which are embedded in technology. So as an auditor, you should know how to gather evidence. Audit, they say, is the process of collecting and evaluating evidence as per the audit objectives. The key focus of ISCA is to teach you how to understand the different layers of technology work and to use the relevant IT tools and techniques. And this is not very complex. It's very simple. ISCA is all about management of technology as the enterprises implement technology. It's also about auditing this technology. So we'll also give you how the technology impacts audit in terms of security and control and the risk and the role of the auditors. So whether you are doing accounting, whether you're performing assurance, or you're performing compliance, you find all these are embedded inside technology. And these are the primary services provided by a CA. With this background of why you need to understand the ISCA topic, not only from a real life perspective, but also from an examination perspective, I'm sure you are interested to know more about how you can score well in the ISCA and also use this knowledge in your practical day-to-day -day life as a CA student and as a chartered accountant. For that, let's start from the top. Let's understand what is the primary objective of this subject, why it was introduced. The primary reason this subject is introduced is because technology has become all-pervasive. If you look at any topic a CA has to study, whether it's income tax, whether it's accounting, finance, compliance, anything for that matter, you find all this embedded inside technology. And technology gives rise to new type of risks. So as a CA, you need to understand what are the risks. The risks are also mitigated by security, which is provided by this technology. And this security has to be configured as per the needs of the organization. And that's what controls come in. And alters are supposed to review and evaluate whether these controls which are embedded inside technology are available, adequate, and appropriate. And all these aspects pertaining to security controls are embedded in the IT processes. And these are performed through the business processes. The subject of ISCA has also considered that a student also learns about practical aspects of how to implement IT in the IT training. In ISCA, the focus is not on practical aspects, but more on the theoretical or the conceptual aspects. As a CA, you are interested in knowing how the management is using information technology. And considering that information technology is being used more from a strategic and a competitive advantage, it's important that the top management has to get involved. When the top management has to be involved in driving how information technology is used, this is where the concepts of governance comes in. And when governance comes in, you also need to ensure that risks are considered. And the risk is now become a regulatory requirement. You also know that most of the compliance aspects which are pertaining to the business are embedded inside information technology. As an auditor, you need to understand how to provide assurance pertaining to the controls which are embedded in technology, which is used in most of the enterprises. The topics which are given in ISCA are closely integrated and linked with each other and also with the subject of auditing and assurance. We'll cover this a little later as to how this integration is happening. ISCA, if you see the foundation, is on GRC. GRC refers to governance, risk, and compliance. And we are focusing on IT environment, 
because most of the business process in a modern enterprises are done in an IT environment. And this cup provides you the updated knowledge and the skills and the best practices which are relevant to the subject of information technology in the practical deployment. Let's understand now the learning objectives of the subject. So as I said, first you need to understand what is the GRC, Governance, Risk and Compliance, which is covered in the first chapter. Once you know what is Governance, Risk and Compliance, you need to understand what are the relevant risks and primarily we look at IT risks and not other business related risks. You also need to understand security, security from the perspective of information technology. You also need to understand how these controls are implemented and these controls are from the perspective of information technology. And as I said, auditors are primarily interested in controls from the perspective of evaluating this from the three A's, availability, adequacy, and appropriateness. And an enterprise needs to have the right risk management approach. How do you manage this risk? We'll discuss this in the later presentation. So as a part of the learning objectives, you need to know what is the impact of the usage of information technology on the controls, not only the controls, the organization structure of any enterprise, and how this is embedded in the various technology applications which are used. You also need to know how this technology impacts the various businesses and operational processes. When you're using information technology, one of the biggest risks is that the technology can fail. So you need to have the right business continuity plans to ensure that the business is continued despite any disruption. And that's where you need to have a BCP. And we also know from the accounting point of view that BCP is learned from the point of a going concern. Now let's look at further. Application software is the heart of the blood flow of any organization. And this is the one which drives business processes. Application software can be procured or they can be developed in-house. How is this process of application software development done? And this is what is done in the module which talks about information systems. We look at the acquisition, which means you acquire an independent software, a standard software like Tally or SAP or Oracle Financials, etc. You may also develop the software internally and when you develop it or you acquire it, you need to implement this. So you need to work out the strategy as to how you're going to implement the software. And this is what is covered in the SDLC process. You also need to understand as an auditor, primarily your objective is to provide assurance to the management. And that's the core of auditing. And auditing requires that you know how to collect and evaluate evidence. And this is from an IT environment. And this is what is the primary perspective in the ISCA syllabus. There are regulatory requirements which impact the enterprises. And as an auditor, you need to know that these regulatory requirements, whether they're pertaining to income tax, whether they're pertaining to any other area, they're embedded inside information technology. For example, if you want to check whether the TDS has been done or the VAT has been paid or the service tax has been paid, all these are performed internally through the application software. And these are regulatory requirements. As an auditor, you're supposed to review and evaluate whether these compliances pertaining to regulations are done. So you need to understand how you can audit these compliances which are embedded inside information technology. And when you're using information technology, you're not only providing assurance services, you can also provide value addition services of implementing technology in organization. As an auditor, it's important that you know what is not only the existing technology, but the emerging technology which can impact enterprises. And this is what we will be covering in the ISCA syllabus. Now let's understand the concepts and principles. This is fundamental to the understanding of information technology. Like I said, you need to read the topics for understanding, not just for remembering. If you look at the number of pages which are there in ISCA, it's perhaps the lowest compared to the total number of pages you read in any other subject. For example, you look at accounting or income tax or any other subject, you may have 800 to 1000 pages, but ISCA just has 400 pages. And it is divided into eight chapters. 
that the number of average number of pages ranges from 40 to 50 pages and you find if you read once and understand you don't need to read so many times what i suggest is when you read not only read the topic for the purpose of examination but also look at how you can apply it in your day to day life as an article and also understand whether you are working as a ca or whether is self employed information technology and the related controls are going to be critical which have to be evaluated so when you are reading the subject i suggest you get into the shoes of the person who is actually implementing this information technology or auditing this information technology and understand how this is actually done you also find these topics are linked together from a macro to a micro perspective and this is what i'll be driving through in my presentation in terms of how each of these topics are connected so look at it from the macro perspective and also don't go just to wide also go in depth as required there's one distinguishing factor you need to remember that you're not understanding technology from a technology perspective but from a control perspective you're not looking at implementing technology which means you're not implementation expert but you are expert in reviewing and evaluating the controls which are embedded inside technology so this topic of iska has a blend of both concepts and practice if you look at the modern world and compare with the past audit has always been there and will continue to be there and information technology you know is imperative it's all pervasive so audit has to look at information technology now if you look at earlier the relationship between audit and it is what is called as information systems audit which means you audit the information which is available in information technology so there was a data processing which is done using information technology the auditor could still access this records and do the audit but now if you look at the modern age audit and it have become closely integrated because most of the things which an auditor has to do is embedded inside information technology not only that the auditor can use information technology as a tool for the purpose of accessing analyzing and evaluating this digital data and this is the key to the success of an auditor the more the auditor is able to use technology not only to understand how technology is implemented but also to use the technology itself for the purpose of audit you will find you become much more proficient and effective in your audit so this is what is the isco all about the integration of audit and it now as auditors as and audit ca students you already familiar with audit what is important for you to know is this aspects pertaining to it isca if you have to put it in short is about the management of it it's also about auditing of it let's understand what are the concepts and principles of the iska paper the idea was to equip the ca students with a holistic approach to it assurance okay how do you audit digital data so when you audit digital data the tradition or the old age perception of auditing information technology from a functional perspective for example auditing purchases auditing sales or auditing cash has to be given a go by because now you need to look at from a business process perspective and this is where you need to understand how do you get the relevant data for the purpose of audit which is available inside information technology you also need to know how do you get the required competencies to meet the challenges of the it environment we live in exciting times where information technology the only constant is change and this change is impact the way we work the way we live and the way we provide the services let's look at the iska perspective pertaining to the topics which are given iska is a new body of knowledge as i said earlier information systems we are looking from the perspective of controls and audit and considering that 
information technology has become an integral part of an organization and being used primarily to drive how the enterprise achieves business objectives, it's important that the senior management has to get involved and that's where the perspective of governance comes in. Not only that, in most of the large enterprises, implementing controls in an organization has become a regulatory requirement. You need to understand not only from a management perspective, but from a governance perspective. And this is what is covered in the first chapter. When you want to audit this information system, which is implemented in information systems, you need to understand what is this information system all about. As auditors, we know information systems. Now, this information system is done through technology, and that's the difference. So there is a particular foundation or a building block which is used for implementing this information technology. And that's what you need to understand in the information system concepts as to what is the underlying architecture or the building block for this technology enabled information systems. When you have moved the data which is available physically to the digital format, it's important that you need to protect this information system which is available in any enterprise and you need to know how this information system is protected and that is done through security. What is security? We'll cover this in detail a little later but as of now we know security deals with CIA, confidentiality, integrity and availability of information. So the third chapter talks about protection of information systems. What are the various means and mechanisms of protecting these information systems? Now, information technology can fail on account of various factors. So we need to ensure that we have a policies, procedures, and practices in place to ensure that business is continued despite any disruptions. And that's what is covered in the BCP and DRP. And we said the heart of any enterprise is the application software. The application software which is required in any enterprise could be procured or this could be developed. So when you're developing or when you're procuring the software, it's important you know what are the underlying processes which are followed. And this is what is covered in SDLC, which is System Development Life Cycle. As an auditor, you need to understand this information system based on the audit objectives. Now, whether you're doing a regulatory audit or whether you're doing a technology related audit, it's important that you need to know how to audit the information which is available in the technology enabled information systems. And there is a separate chapter on auditing information system. Broadly, this gives you the complete genesis of what ISCA is all about. Now, if you see the relationship, it's very clear. First, you need to look at a new body of knowledge which is pertaining to management of information technology from a macro perspective, which is covered in the governance management of information system. There is the underlying technology and the process which are used for implementing this, which is covered in the information system concepts. You need to protect this information, and that's what is covered in the production of information assets. You should ensure that this information system is working as and when required. So this is where you need to have a BCP and a DRP. This software, which is used for running the business processes, there is a specific process which are performed, and that's what is covered in SDLC. And as an auditor, depending on the type of audit, you need to understand how this information system processes this data. And this is what audit is all about. We'll get into the different aspects of what audit is all about, specifically from different types of information systems audit, and also how audit is done in a technology environment. Now let's understand a little better what are the chapters in the ISCA and the flow. So one I said, you need to understand the concepts pertaining to governance and management of information system. As auditors, we know various types of information systems which are used in enterprises because these are the ones which actually run the business processes, which actually provide the compliances. And as auditors, we are supposed to know what are the business process and we have to validate and verify the compliances. So these governance is actually implemented through information system. So we should know how this information system works. And we said you need to protect this information system. And 
to ensure the information is available we need to have the bcp and disaster recovery planning and you have software which is used within enterprises which could be procured and developed you need to have the acquisition development and the implementation of information systems and as an auditor primarily you are auditing information system now when you are doing an information systems audit you could be auditing from the perspective of governance of gov information system you could be looking at technology layers you could be looking at primarily from the part of security or you could be looking at business continuity or you could look at and evaluate the is audit but when you performing a general audit primarily you are looking at auditing the information systems to look at the data as required from the perspective of your audit are based on the audit objectives information technology is also impacted based on the regulatory requirements there are also regulatory requirements which make it mandatory what are the regulatory requirements we'll see it a little later so this is what is covered in the information tech technology related related chapter which talks about regulatory issues pertaining to it and last but not the least we need to know that the only constant about technology is change so we need to understand technology not only from the existing perspective but also what is the emerging technology and this is what is covered in the last chapter so let's have a quick overview of what is the technology landscape which as an auditor we should know in any organization to use information technology we need certain facilities which are housed for example imagine a data center a data center will have certain facilities which is the place the environment for housing the facilities which is the physical infrastructure the ups the generator the electrical uh, requirements you also have the facilities which are required for running this physically when you get inside the computer the software which makes technology work is the operating system the operating system but itself is useless the operating system gives access to the resources of the computer but to use the operating system we need to know how to use application software and that's where you need to understand the application software the application software stores the data in a database the application software actually stores the data after processing as per the requirements of the enterprise as an auditor if you understand that data is the life blood or the currency of any organization you find you can definitely audit this particular data which is available any organization has an organization structure and now this gives you an image of the organization structure you got a ceo ceo cfo etc you also have different hierarchy now each of these people have to access information system to perform their duties now when this information with the organization structure where the employees have to access this information you find this is embedded inside information technology so you have these facilities which actually has the physical computer the physical computer has the operating system it has got a database it also has the application software and as auditors or the enterprise or the employees within the organization you are primarily concerned with data now this data has to be accessed by each of the employees in the hierarchy whether it's the level of the ceo whether the ceo cfo or ceo who are with the employee they have to access this particular data now you need to protect this data by building the right controls so when you auditing information technology if you just remember this one particular perspective this i think is an overarching framework which covers all the chapters so primarily whether you look at governance which looks at how an organization implements information technology what are the policy procedures practices they have if you look at even information systems this covers the complete information system landscape or you look at protection where you're looking at how do you protect this information technology infrastructure or you look at sdlc which is covered in the application software or you look at regulatory requirements or data all these employees have to access this data now you need to ensure that this data is pro properly protected and this is what we'll cover so if you keep this one particular slide in mind image then you find it becomes very easy to understand all the related chapters as we move on before we get to the subject i hope by now you're quite clear about the overall architecture 
of information systems and how as an alter we need to look at this information systems from a system perspective and not necessarily from a technology perspective. To understand the SCA paper, it's important that you need to know some key terms and definitions. And these are flowing throughout all the chapters. If you know these key terms and definitions, you find what are be the chapters. There are totally eight chapters. In all the eight chapters, this basic concept is used throughout. Now let's understand what are the key terms and definitions. The first term you need to understand is why do you enterprise require security? Okay, security is required because there are vulnerabilities. Okay, we'll understand what is the vulnerability. A vulnerability is the inherent weakness. Now, if you look at this image, there's a beautiful lady who's swimming in the ocean. Okay, now her requirement is that she wants to enjoy the swim in the ocean. Now, is this a vulnerability? Is it a weakness? Okay, what is the weakness or vulnerability? Vulnerability is a weakness that could be exploited to cause damage to the system. Now, vulnerability is an inherent weakness, but itself it doesn't cause any problems. The problem is caused by the threats. Now look at this. Now this threat is the shark. What is a threat? An event with the potential to cause harm to a system. And this could be in the form of, from the accounting perspective, could be in the form of disclosure, modification, destruction, or a denial of service. Just imagine e-commerce store. Now if the price of the uh, purchase price of this rate, uh, the uh, various commodities is available to the competitor, it is disclosed. What is the impact? If these prices which are available to the customers, if it's modified unauthorizedly, what will happen? If the data pertaining to a bank, which is pertaining to the customers, is distracted or destroyed, you just imagine what will the bank. Now, if the services, for example, you take an online store or you take an airline, if you're not able to book the tickets online, there is a denial of service. So you can know what the impact. So these are all the threats. Now, as long as the threats exist and they do not exploit the vulnerability, there is no issue. The problem arises when the threat exploits the vulnerability. And that's what gives rise to a risk. So risk is what can go wrong in an information technology environment. As auditors, we know we have a fundamental problem. We know we have to audit the information technology environment. And quite often when the data is digital, which is the data has become invisible, we found we are lost in a maze. Now the challenge is, how do you cope with this digital data? And this is where we have the issue for the auditors. In the case of digital data, which is L-O-V-E, which stands for loss of visual evidence. As an auditor, we need to collect and evaluate evidence as per the audit objectives. And in a digital environment, this data is available inside the facilities, inside the operating system, inside the database, and inside the application software. And this is where the data is primarily there. Now, this data is available in a digital format. Now, you should know as an auditor, when you're evaluating this digital data, how do you collect and evaluate this evidence? How do you know what is that you're looking for? And this is what is you learn in the ISCA paper. Let's understand the next term, control. What is the control? You have a general idea what is internal controls. Now let's understand from an IT perspective, from a generic perspective, what is this control all about? Control is not necessarily pertaining to the technology related controls. Controls are generic in nature. Control refers to the policies which are formulated by the top management. Control refers to the procedures which are formulated by the middle management. Control refers to the practices which are done by the low level management or the operational management. Now controls do not operate in a vacuum. These policies, procedures, practices, these are the three P's, do not operate in a vacuum. They have to be implemented in an organization. And if you remember, we talked about the organization structure. There's a particular organ structure. Each of the employees have to access this information. You need to ensure each of these people in the organization are able to access the data depending on the need, depending on the business strategy. And this is where controls also consider the organ structure. Controls are not available by default. They have to be designed. And what is the perspective from which they're designed? 
they are designed to provide a reasonable assurance. You cannot provide absolute assurance. You can provide only reasonable assurance. What are two perspectives from which this assurance is provided? One, that the business objectives are achieved. Any enterprise which is using information technology is using information technology not just from a technology perspective that they want to use the latest technology, they want to use this technology as a tool to achieve their business objectives. While using technology, there are also various types of risks which can lead to events, which is also called as a risk. Okay, and this is where you need to know that these are undesired events. And these undesired events need to be prevented, need to be detected and corrected. So if you look at primarily control, control has two perspectives. Controls are there to ensure that you achieve the business objectives and also ensure that the risks are mitigated, which means what is the risk is an undesired event. These are prevented or they're detected and corrected. I'm sure with this perspective, you, when you look at technology, you'll find it much more easier to audit. Now let's understand the definition of IS audit. Quite often we have a concept that IS audit is something which is the prerogative of the specialist or the technologist. Let me shatter this myth and tell you by the definition. What is IS audit? Now to look at the word information systems audit, they say information systems audit refers to any audit, which means you could be doing a tax audit, you could be doing a VAT audit, or you could be doing a company audit. What would be the type of audit? If that data which you're auditing is embedded inside information technology, it can be called as a type of IS audit, which means most of you could be doing IS audit without knowing you're actually doing an IS audit. Now let's look at the second aspect of the definition. Here we are saying that the information systems audit refers to any audit that encompasses wholly or partly, which means you look at information technology in totality or you look at only one component. For example, as I said, you can look at only the facilities or you can look at the operating system or you could look at the database or you could look at the application software or you may look at the SDLC process which are followed or you may look at the BCP or you may look at the IT strategy. It could be looked at in isolation in any specific area or you may look at in totality, the complete area of IT deployment. And all auditors, you look at these two key terms which are used throughout, review and evaluate. Review, which means as an auditor, you are not responsible for implementing the controls. You're supposed to come back and review what the management has implemented to check whether the controls are available, adequate and appropriate. And what is valuation, evaluation? Evaluation would be that you need to validate against a particular benchmark. But if you are doing tax audit, you are valid against the Income Tax Act requirements. If you are doing the audit as per the VAT, you are validating the VAT requirements as per the VAT uh, report. Or if you are doing a company audit, you are validating as per the Companies Act. So primarily, IS audit also deals with two key areas, the review and evaluate. If you look at any of the chapters, you find these two key terms, review and evaluate, used extensively and that's what is the audit perspective and what is the scope of IS audit you could be looking at automated information processing systems that one area which means anything which is aut automated any information systems which is automated you could be looking at that or you could also be looking at the related non-automated process for example if you look at a supermarket you have a procurement system which is completely automated but there is a manual interface where somebody has to barcode the the pricing and fix it on the particular items. So that's the related non-automated process. When you're doing an IS audit, you also look at the related non-automated process. Not only that, you also need to look at the interfaces between the information systems which are automated and the related non-automated processes because you're looking at systems in totality, whether they're working in unison to provide the business, the facility to process the information system as per the requirements of the organization. I'm sure with this perspective of IS audit, if you read any of the topics, you find it becomes much more easier to understand. Let's get a little deeper into what is IS audit all about? What are the key questions? The primary objective of IS audit is to provide reasonable assurance to the management about what, uh, whether these control objectives which you identified as relevant for the 
audit of uh, as per the audit objectives are they being met which means they are implemented as required for example if you're doing a financial audit financial statement audit you're looking at the financial statement assertions okay so this is the criteria or these are the controls which you're validating and when you find there are control weaknesses what are the control weaknesses you have risks which are mitigated by implementing the right controls when you find the risk is greater than controls then there is a control weakness now this control weakness could result in an exposure and exposure is a potential loss so when you're doing is audit primarily you are reviewing the controls to validate whether the controls are adequate and appropriate and if there are controls which are not adequate you are identifying to check what will happen or what the impact which means to substantiate the impact of this risk and also advise the management on the corrective actions to be taken so when you're doing an is audit it could be from two perspectives you could do it from a proactive perspective which means when the systems are being implemented or deployed during the stage you could look at uh, doing the is audit for example if you look at sdlc we are, when you're doing sdlc you're actually doing a proactive audit okay you could get involved in auditing the bcp right from the time of implementation even before preparation of the bcp that could be proactive or it could be reactive which means you come back after the event is over and do the audit which is also a post implementation audit so we have the post implementation or a pre implementation the scope as i said could be across the enterprise you could look at the enterprise in totality or you could look at specific department or you could look at technology or an application or a business process you remember i said is audit refers to any audit okay which encompasses wholly or partly what review and evaluation of automated information processing systems non automated processes and the interfaces between them okay this is what we said is information systems audit now if you look at wholly or partly what is meant by partly you could be looking at partly only a specific department or you could be looking at a particular technology area or you could be looking at a specific application software i hope this gives you a complete perspective of what is audit is all about now let's get into the process of is audit or it audit or how do you audit in an it environment the it process could be audited first of all you need to understand the business requirements which you do in any normal audit you need to understand the related risk what can go wrong this is what you need to understand and you also need to understand the impact of this which is the consequence or the exposure which is the potential loss okay now for all this it's important that you understand what controls are actually implemented in the organization so you look at technology in the way it's implemented and related to technology there is security which is configured as per the enterprise requirements and this is what is called as controls so when you're auditing any particular area now this technology is used to run certain business processes so you need to understand the specific business process which are being audited how they are using technology what is the security what is the risk pertaining to this what is security what are the controls and as an auditor you will review all this to provide an assurance to the management and what is the assurance about whether these controls how these controls are actually working and this you perform by doing two types of test one is the substantive test and second is all the compliance test compliance test the word is comply which means you look at a macro level whether the controls are working as and we say for example let us say you have to verify whether the interest has been correctly applied during the year so how do you verify it in a manual system you pick up some sample in, uh, interest pick up the rate applicable and then verify in the case of it audit when you have to verify interest you first look at the compliance controls which means you go to the parameters and verify how this in interest has been properly configured whether it's correctly configured that's the compliance controls and then you substantiate which means substantial which means you verify the details and what is that you are verifying whether these controls which are implemented in the organization whether they are working every control has an objective and as an auditor when you do the it audit first of all you set the controls objective what are the control objectives let's summarize the discussion we had so far so when you're doing any type of it audit you need to understand the scope and objective of the assignment 
for example, as I said, IT audit could also be any type of even a regulatory requirement. If you are able to apply the principles of IT audit for your tax audit or for a VAT audit or for a company audit, you will find you can be much more proficient and effective in doing the audit. So when you read the subject, when you read the topic, read not only for remembering, not for remembering, but for the purpose of application, for the purpose of implementation. Understand, okay, how can I apply this particular concept or how is it applied in any particular audit? So you have to understand the business process, not just at the activities and tasks, which means you're looking at from a holistic perspective or a macro perspective. This is fundamental to IS audit or for auditing information technology environment. Information is generated, is processed and stored. So there is a particular perspective in which this information is processed. This is where you need to understand the information architecture. So when you look at information technology environment, you're not looking at specific functions. For example, the purchase department or sales department or uh, any accounting department, etc. You look at in totality as to how does the process happen? Where does the process get initiated? Who generates this particular process? Who has got access to this data? Who processes this information? And where is it stored? Who can access? So it means you are looking at information from an architect perspective, not from an engineering perspective. So we need to look at this information system in totality. When you're doing information systems audit, there are various types of standards, guidelines, and procedures. So you need to use the relevant standards and guidelines as required. We'll be covering this in the later presentations as we go on. You also need to understand the technology layer. As I said, you need to understand technology, not from the perspective of technology, but from a practical perspective. Just like when you have to drive a car, you don't need to be a mechanic, but you should know the principle of driving, how to drive. And if you know how to drive a specific car, you can drive any type of a car because the fundamental principle of driving are same. Okay. You also need to understand technology from the perspective of how these are deployed in enterprises. What are the risks of the particular deployment? For example, if you look at banks who implement computerization, when the computerization was done in what is called as ALPMs, advanced ledger post machines, which means they are isolated individual. For example, you had the savings account, current account, and each of their isolation, there are different types of risks. When the same thing was shifted to LAN environment, which means the computerization of a particular branch, the risks are different. Now, if you find the CBS environment, where the branch is not the one which has the data, is the data center, which is all the data, now the risks are completely different. So based on the needs of the assignment, you need to formulate the strategy as to how you're going to execute this audit assignment and also work out the methodology. There has to be change in the methodology or the approach for doing audit in an IT environment. And the basic concept in the case of information systems audit is you need to understand the risk. You need to understand how the risks have been assessed. Quite often they say ignorance of the risk is the biggest risk. In many enterprises you find they don't even know that they don't know, especially pertaining to the risk, pertaining to IT. As an auditor, we should not be following the same paradigm. We should know what are the risks, what are the impact, and be able to suggest what are the relevant controls which can be implemented in the organization. So if to summarize all the discussion you have, when you're doing information system, we set the information criteria or the criteria for the purpose of audit. Now, for example, the criteria could be, I'm looking at effectiveness or we could be looking at efficiency or we may look at security where we look at CIA, confidentiality, integrity and availability or I may do the audit primarily from the perspective of compliance. I want to verify whether let's say the back compliance has been done or I want to look at the reliability of the information. So I can set a single or a combination of this criteria for the purpose of doing the IS audit. What you use for the purpose of doing the audit is the IT resources. This IT resource is what is used in enterprises. As an auditor, I should also know how to use the technology for auditing the technology. These IT resources actually run the specific business process. This business process, as you know, could be pertaining to purchases, could be pertaining to sales, or could be pertaining to any specific area. When you're doing the audit, this business process using information technology have the data which is available in a digital format. When you're auditing these business processes, 
using certain set criteria, you come to a conclusion as to whether the controls are available, adequate and appropriate. And you are also validating whether the risks have been properly mitigated by implementing the controls. And if the risks are greater than the controls, now that becomes an audit finding. Or you may also find there are areas of improvement which where you can also give recommendations. So when you're doing information systems audit, the primary objective is to provide assurance to the management. Now look at the slide. Now imagine this, you should be able to get the flow. If you look at any of the chapters, you find that this is the fundamental flow. Whether you look at production of information system, whether you look at governance, primarily the information which is being processed digitally. As an auditor, you need, look, you need to look at the business processes, you need to look at the policies, procedures, controls in the organ structure, and look at whether the controls are available, adequate, and appropriate. Now let's have a quick overview of the topics which are covered in this particular presentation. So we'll have an introduction, which you are doing now. Then we'll get to the key concepts of governance. We'll also understand what are the governance principles which are pertaining to information technology. Now, governance as applied to enterprise becomes corporate governance, and corporate governance is a regulatory requirement. We look at the relationship between the governance as applied to IT and as applied to corporates. There is a new concept which is emerging, which is being increasingly used, which is called the governance of enterprise information technology. We'll understand what is the governance of enterprise information technology. As per the enterprise requirements, if you look at the Companies Act, we have something called the enterprise requirement, enterprise risk management concepts, which is also to be implemented. In fact, the Clause 49 requirements also require the management to provide a document or a statement or assertion on how the enterprise risk management is being done within the company. And as auditors, we are supposed to be controls experts. We need to evaluate whether the controls are existing in the enterprise, and these are adequate as per the needs of the enterprise. Internal controls is a regulatory requirement, not just a management requirement. And these internal controls are embedded inside information technology. The second part of the presentation, we'll look at the role of IT in enterprises. We'll also look at how IT could be used from a strategic perspective, which is what is called as IT strategy planning. We'll also look at part three, which covers the risk management, which is very critical, which we'll discuss briefly now. Now that we've got the fundamental concepts, I think later presentation will be going a little faster. There are various frameworks, standards, and guidelines which can be used. COVID is one such framework. We'll look at how COVID could be used. There are also compliance reviews which can be done independently or as a part of the assignment, we we'll look at how an IT compliance review is done. And last but not the least, we need to know how to do information systems audit. And this is what is covered in the chapter, which is pertaining to information systems assurance. Here, we'll, in this particular presentation of chapter one, we'll be only focusing to the extent required from the perspective governance and from the perspective IS assurance. Now, what will we cover in this part one? As I said, we'll look at the introduction, the key concepts of governance, what is the information technology in governance, how does corporate governance impact IT, and what is the governance principle which is there in both pertaining to corporate or pertaining to IT. In both these areas, we have governance. What is this governance all about? We'll understand this. Now, if you understand there's a common underlying theme which is there, whether you call it as, whether you call it as governance, whether you call it as corporate governance, whether you call it as enterprise governance, whether you call it as IT governance, or whether you call it as GEAT, there is some common underlying theme. If you just get the basic common concept correct, you will find the same principles are followed throughout. Quite often you are asked in the examination questions about what is this different concepts of governance, or you may also ask about the benefits of this governance. This governance could be pertaining to corporate governance, enterprise governance, or IT governance. In the next presentation, we'll cover this in detail. We also need to know about the enterprise risk management because this also is covered in the risk management in totality. So if you have to summarize and look at the chapter one, which we'll be taking in the next presentation, we need to understand what is this governance all about. We need to understand how this governance applied in enterprises works as corporate governance, what are the key principles. And we need to look at GEIT, which is governance of enterprise IT, especially where information technology has become integral part of the enterprise, 
because if you remove information technology, the enterprise ceases to exist. And that's where you need to have this GEIT. When you want to implement GEIT, which is Governance of Enterprise Information Technology, you need to have a system of enterprise risk management. You need to have a system of internal controls. And that's what is covered in enterprise risk management and internal controls. And you can use the relevant frameworks. And one of the principles is COBIT. The COBIT also has the concepts of principles and enablers. We'll cover this a little later. And you can use COBIT for the purpose of GRC or for various types of IS assurance assignments. And this is what we'll be covering in the chapter one in totality. And this, as I said, is covered in a series of six presentations. Let's summarize the discussion we had so far in terms of the key principles. The level of knowledge you are supposed to have as per this subject is concerned to be advanced knowledge. This subject has been presented in a structured way. First, there is the learning objectives. Understand what is that you need to learn because if you don't know what you want to learn, then you'll not be able to learn. Like they say, if you don't know where you're going, no road can take you there. So before reading the chapter, understand what are the learning objectives of the particular chapter. Then each of the learning objectives has a list of task statements. Task statement is what as an auditor or what for as a student you're supposed to know to do. Third, based on what you need to know to do, you'll have to know what is that you need to know, which is covered in the knowledge statements. So the focus, like I said, is from the practical point of view, where you need to know, for example, if there's a BCP, what is that you do in a BCP? So this is based on the do. Task statement is based on what you need to do. And for doing this, what is that you need to know is covered in the knowledge statement. So you have the learning objectives, which leads to task statements, which leads to the knowledge statement. And the knowledge statement gives the concepts which are covered in the chapters. This is the macro perspective in which the ISCA topic has been covered, presented in the chapter. Let's look at the learning objectives, which were covered earlier. And this is focused on the first chapter. We said we need to look at the governance, risk and compliance, which is the G. Also understand the distinction between governance and management. We'll understand the role of IT because IT is becoming integral. And how this IT is used for various types of information systems. And we'll understand this from a strategic perspective. And strategy as linked to the business strategy. The IT cannot have a strategy independent of the business strategy. For example, if a bank has a, has a goal of achieving, let's say, 10% market share, for achieving this market share, what is the information technology enabled process we need to have? What is the type of the information technology infrastructure we need to have? This is what we need to understand. And primarily when information technology is being used, the focus is on the business value from the use of IT. And we know that information technology gives rise to new types of risk. We need to understand the different types of IS risk. We also need to know how information systems risks are mitigated by implementing the right type of risk management. We also will understand what are the aspects of IT compliance and the responsibilities of the top management pertaining to this IT GRC. We'll understand the key concepts of governance, especially from the perspective of using COVID as a framework and how information system assurance is done for a GIT from the perspective of GIT. Let's look at the task statement. Okay, we said we need to understand the learning objectives, which you already seen. These learning objectives are related to the task statements and the task statements are related to the knowledge statement. Okay, now you find the task statements, as I said, are related to to do, what is that you need to do to be able to perform this particular IT audit assignment or a specific review relating to an IT area. So what is that you need to know? What is that you need to do? You need to understand primarily from the point of distinguishing what is enterprising governance, what is corporate governance, what is GIT, GRC, and IT management. It means you look at fundamentally the different concepts of governance and IT management and know how to distinguish between the two. So when you look at organization, the organization says this is have implemented governance, you should know whether they actually implement governance or they're only managing IT. The second aspect is you should be able to examine how IT is being used, what is the role of IT in the enterprise, and from the perspective of the IT strategy, and aligning the IT as per the business strategy. 
You should also be able to identify the key business processes and practices which are implemented in the enterprise, primarily from the perspective of checking whether this IT implementation provides value creation. If you look at any enterprise, what are the large segment of investments or large portion of expenditure is pertaining to IT. So it's important to derive value from this IT. And that's what as an IS auditor you'll be looking at. So from the point of security, we look at the risk management, which is we look at reviewing the IS risk management strategy, how the strategy is formulated pertaining to IS risk management, what are the different types of risk and their impact. We'll also understand the regulatory aspects pertaining to IT compliance and the specific roles and responsibility in the case of large enterprise where you're looking at IT GRC implementation. We'll also know how to use the best practices such as COBIT or other frameworks for the purpose of meeting the enterprise needs and for implementing GIT. And last but not the least is how to provide information systems assurance in GIT. Now let's look at the knowledge statement. Now if you see, based on the learning objective, the task statements are formulated. Based on the task statement, which means to perform the particular task, you need to have certain knowledge. So to be able to distinguish the various types of governance and management, you need to know what is governance, what is the risk, and what is compliance, and what is management, and what is the relationship between the two. Next, you should also know what is the role of IT, how to align IS strategy in tune with the business strategy for the perspective of achieving business value from IT. You also need to know the various types of risk management strategy, the impact of this IS risk, and the different types of IS risk. You also need to know what is this IT compliance, what are the responsible of the top management pertaining to IT GRC. You also need to know the concepts of GIT, which is Governance Enterprise Information Technology, and how to use frameworks such as COVID. And you also need to know what is the role of information systems in the area of GIT. Now let's understand graphically how do you align IT with the business needs. If you have to just summarize one principle pertaining to GIT, especially from the point of ISCA and in one chapter, if you look at the next two slides, I think you should be able to get this perspective very clearly. You need to align IT with the business needs. Now look at this image. Now you have IT, which is earlier in isolation, which was used more for data processing. Now you have an enterprise, which is the business, which is running this business processes. Now there's a bridge which has to be crossed. IT has to run this business process, which means IT has become the bedrock on which information technology processes are performed specific business process are performed. So IT has to get to the bridge, cross this and move on to the business. So that's where we talk about aligning IT with the business needs. Now what is the value addition through IS audit? You have the auditor who has a regulatory requirement. We can also perform audits as per management requirement. And you had IT which is used by the enterprise to meet the enterprise objectives. It's important that the auditor has to understand how IT is being used in the enterprise. So if that is the case, the auditor has to come from out from the ivory tower and come into the bridge, cross the bridge of the IT divide and move into information technology to understand how IT is deployed within the enterprise. How, what are the type of risks which emerge? What are the security features which are there in the technology? What are the controls which are there? And you will look at this when you do the audit. I hope this provides more clarity. When you're providing IS audit, the focus is not just from the point of meeting the regulatory requirement, but also for the purpose of providing value addition. And this is where a large segment of IS audit is done, where you focus on how can I add value to the enterprise, help enterprise navigate IT, use IT to meet the enterprise objectives. 
And this is where, with the fundamental knowledge of compliances, business processes, and regulatory requirements, now the if the auditors are able to add the knowledge of technology, auditors can definitely play a big role. With this perspective, let's summarize what is going to be the auditor of the future in a digital world where it's a geography has become history, where the data is digital. So what are the attributes of the auditor? You can map and check whether you have these attributes to become an IT auditor. If you don't have, you can actually look at how you can develop these attributes. First, you should be versatile. What does versatility mean? Which means you need to look at the big picture, be proactive, and look at value addition. How can you provide value? It's not just a compliance chapa where you look at what has been done, what is required, and whether it's been done. So you look at in terms of, okay, how IT can be used to drive the enterprise goals to meet the uh, IT goals. So we need to look at enterprise from a macro perspective, from a big, big picture perspective, which means you need to get into the shoes of the CEO or the CMD of the company. You need to get involved which means you need to understand what is the roles which are critical to the organization structure and integrate this with the information technology. You need to have basic or fundamental understanding of how technology works and your understanding technology, as we emphasize so many times, from the perspective of risk, how they can technology can be used to improve the process and how you can improve the efficiency and effectiveness of business processes. As an auditor, it's not just audit, but advisory services which you can provide. And this could be pertaining to not only assurance, you can help the intermodal team, you can help the enterprise by achieving the business objectives. You can also provide training, you can also provide consulting. In IT audit, there are a lot of consulting which is done to actually help enterprises implement technology in a much better way to ensure that you are able to derive value from IT. And we are looking at becoming a thought leader in the use of information technology. So it means as auditors, we should not be the backbenchers. We should be able to take the leadership role and primarily from the perspective of risk management, how do you manage the risk and also to improve the effectiveness of the organization. So this is what is supposed to be the auditor of the future. So it means if you look at this image, the auditor has to constantly keep running. Not only constantly keep running, now they need to get into the future. And this is what the auditor of the future is going to be. So it means you need to keep constantly running to be in the same place. And that's how technology is moving very fast. Thank you for being with me so far. I hope this presentation has provided you some value addition in terms of uh, how you need to approach the subject of ISCA. Let's have a quick recap of what we have discussed. We have given you a background of how digitization is making the world a global village. So we need to understand the context and see that there is no escape from information technology. Most of the data has become digital. It's important that we need to know how to access, analyze, and audit this digital data, not only from a technology perspective for doing an IT audit, but for any type of audit. Now, if you know how to use information technology effectively in your audit, you find that you become much more proficient, effective, and efficient. We also know the importance of the topic, ISCA, Information Systems Control and Audit. We will look at information systems which are embedded in information technology, and as auditors, we are control experts, and whether we accept or not, we have to review and evaluate the controls. So this subject we have seen from the perspective of importance, that it is important not only from an examination point of view, but also from a practical, real-life perspective. When you read the subject, the study material, from the point of remembering or mugging, you find it very difficult to remember and reproduce in the exam. But if you read for the purpose of understanding and for the purpose of applying in your practical day-to-day -day life as an article in your work area, you find it becomes very easy to understand and this definitely can be a very high scoring subject. We also seen the key principles of information systems control and audit where it said technology is the, the base of enterprises, is the foundation of the building block for enterprises. 
The key principles are when you're using technology, there are new types of risks. These new risks pertaining to information technology or information systems need to be mitigated by implementing appropriate security. This security has to be configured as per the needs of the enterprise, and that's where we have controls. And as an auditor, you need to review and evaluate whether these controls are available, adequate, and appropriate. We also know the perspective from which we need to read the ISCA paper. Read for the purpose of understanding, not just for the purpose of remembering. Read for implementation or applying. When you start reading from this particular perspective, you find this subject of ISCA is very simple and easy to understand. And you look at the number of pages, the amount of studies you have to do is much more limited. And you don't need to go back to the subject to again and again. You can make a mind map of the key topics based on our discussion. And you find when you go back to the study material, it becomes easier to understand. We also given the relationship between the key concepts which are covered in the SCAR paper and especially the chapters. For example, how each of the chapters are interlinked and related and how the topic of information systems control and audit itself are related together. We also seen the structure, which means when you understand the subject of information technology deployment in enterprise, you're not looking at it from an engineering perspective, but you're looking at it from a technology perspective from a control perspective. And you need to understand the information architecture of the enterprise. So it's important you know how to navigate through the various layers of technology, right from the facilities to the operating system, to the database, to the application software, to get to the data as required. So you need to have a fundamental understanding of how technology works, not necessarily a mechanical or an engineering perspective how technology works. We also covered the concepts. When you want to read and understand the subject of ISCA, it's important that you have conceptual clarity of the topic. And we also covered as the foundation, some of the key terms and definitions, which are all pervasive throughout all the chapters. And if you remember these terms, if you know how these terms actually apply practically, then you find it's very easy to understand the subject material or the study material. We also see the flow or the linkage between the chapters, how each of the chapters lead to the other. Now you need to know the governance is about management of technology. Then we get into the aspect of the founding or the building blocks pertaining to the information technology, which is provided through the information systems and the information technology architecture, which is the facilities, the operating system, database, application software. We also know the relationship between the flow between the chapters. And then we also looked at the way the material is presented. You need to understand the learning objectives first. Then you need to understand the task statement. Task statement is what you do. And knowledge statement, which is what you need to know. And then you have the chapters, which cover the key concepts in a structured way. Now, having understood this, what are the next steps? Now, you have invested more than an hour on listening to this. What I suggest is, Go back to this presentation and look at it again and again till you get a conceptual clarity and make your mind map of the key terms and definitions, the key concepts which are applicable. Now, once you understand these subject concepts, the key terms, then you find it becomes much more easier for you to apply this concept, not only from the examination point of view, but from a practical perspective. So the next step I suggest is go back to your study material, look at, let's say, the learning objectives, the task statements, and the knowledge statement, and see whether you can understand. The best way to understand the subject is to look at the learning objectives and say whether you can speak on that particular concept. Look at the task statement, say whether with the understanding or reading of the study material, whether you can perform this particular task. And look at the knowledge statement and ask yourself, do you know this subject? You look at the key definitions, for example, governance, enterprise governance, corporate governance, all the terms, can you give your own explanation of this? So this is the level at which you should understand. So my next suggestion would be, before you go back to the next lecture, go back to the, the basic chapters, have a quick reading of this, and you'll find it. the study material makes much better sense and becomes easier to understand. Once you are able to adopt and make ISCA as a part of your 
internal understanding or internal memory, then you find it becomes a part of your internal DNA. It's not something which is iska or uska. It becomes iska is mera because it has become internalized. So thank you very much. I hope this presentation was useful. I wish you all the best. I look forward to meeting you in the next presentation.